So it was a good era. And ANC was rewarded politically. Over the subsequent uh, 15 or so years to today, living standards stagnated and then they began to reverse. And real per capita GDP, which is a good measure of that sort of thing, has been down for several years now, one year after the other after the other. So Dr. Franz Cronier, the former CEO of the Institute of Race Relations in South Africa, is actually giving, breaking down you know, the trajectory by which the ANC was at its height after 1994, especially during the period of Thabo Mbeki, all the way to what seems like a doomsday under President Ramaphosa. Let's listen to his breakdown of the trajectory of the ANC in South Africa, and I'll be back for some interesting analysis. In the first decade after 1994, the ANC did very well to raise the basic living standards of millions of people. The number of South Africans with a job essentially doubled in the first decade and a bit after democracy. We saw the rollout of the most expansive welfare program of any emerging market. The number of welfare grants paid increased from two and a half to about 12 and a half million. Ten formal houses were built in that first decade for every one new shack that was erected in the country. And the share of families that went to bed without electricity every evening fell from 49% on the first evening that South Africa celebrated its democracy to under 20%, it was 19%, when Mr Mbeki ultimately packed up his office. At the same time, the ANC had secured a remarkable economic turnaround. Government debt levels had been cut in half from 48% to 27% of GDP, and the first budget surplus had been recorded since the formation of the Union of South Africa in 1910. So it was a good era, and ANC was rewarded politically. Over the subsequent uh, 15 or so years to today, living standards stagnated, and then they began to reverse. And real per capita GDP, which is a good measure of that sort of thing, has been down for several years now, one year after the other after the other. There's a misnomer in the country that the ANC can govern with impunity, that there are no consequences for bad governance. But if you study the micro-political data on the country, that's wrong. And there's an almost immediate negative political consequence as soon as living standards in the country begin to slip. And it's the slippage of the living standards that has brought ANC support levels down to the low of around 45% today. And that's quite a good thing, because what it means is that our political system is working. It hasn't failed. We're not at the point of some terrible political collapse. Now, 1994 wasn't a mistake. It hasn't all become a disaster of chaos and turmoil. What it in fact means is we're in the fortunate minority of emerging markets that at the end of their first post-colonial government have the prospect to change peacefully, which is what's going to happen on the 29th of May. The alternative is that you change violently and young people pick up rifles to change the government. That's not going to happen here. It's going to be a bit of turbulence. It's going to be a bit unstable. It's going to be a bit uncertain about how it's going to happen. But we can be very fortunate. Firstly, I'll make some more points about what we can be fortunate about as we go on through this conversation. That we are now in the minority of post-colonial emerging markets with a working political system that enforces consequences for failures of governance and policy and allow the society that you're in to transition peacefully from one administration to the next. Yeah, so what do you guys think? Uh, Dr. Franz Cronier, in a video, he actually speaks about how he started at the bottom of the Institute of Race Relations. If, for those of you who do not know him, Dr. Franz Cronier, he was a former um, CEO of the Institute of Race, Re Race Relations. And um, the way I know about this institute is because um, former President Thabo Mbeki cites the institute a lot and he actually mentions uh, Dr. Franz Cronier and um, one of the, I think it's Professor or Dr. Andreas. So these guys have really sharp, intelligent analysis of South Africa, South Africa's economy, South Africa's politics and all that. And so when they speak, uh, you might want to listen, at least just for consideration, not like everything they say is true, but just to consider the, the facts um, their research brings forth because at the end of the day research is key so in this video we could hear how South Africa you know really hit high marks 
uh, post-1994. There was a lot of, um, you know, victories for the ANC government, electricity, water, all of the crisis now that I hear most of you in the comments really write about the ANC under President Ramaphosa. From 1994 all the way, I think, to the end of Thabo Mbeki's uh, regime, it felt really cool. South Africa was this really powerful, full of potential, you know, nation that actually just suddenly started re experiencing, you know, backwards uh, developments, especially through what uh, has been termed state capture, ESCOM, Transnet, and all of that. But um, one of the things that really interested me, and that's what I wanted, that's the perspective I want to throw here in this video, is, um, you know, I discovered the document that um, President Zuma actually, uh, in, in his address, address from the presidency at the end of his regime in South Africa, he actually stated the list of wins, victories, milestones that the ANC government under his regime had achieved, um, you know, after his regime. And I thought it was really interesting because they were really interesting parts of what he describes as victories, which today is still being criticized as some of the areas in which South Africa is failing severely. And so you guys will have to fill us in in the comments so we understand where this divide lies. But according to uh, Jacob Zuma, in his final State of the Nation address for the term in his office, um, he, spoke, he, sp he actually spoke about how um, the government's localization program was proving successful and that in two years ago from when he um, you know, left the presidency, more than 20,000 mini bus taxis and 330 buses had begun being assemb assembled locally in South Africa. So yeah, there was a massive localization project where rather than import finished vehicles and all that, due to Jacob Zuma's influence, there were much more you know, assembly plants within South Africa and assembly was really going on. And that assembly produced a lot of jobs, much needed jobs and investment, according to the presidency at the time. And that in the next five, five years, um, you know, that the state, at the time when he left, the state would procure 75% of its goods and services from South African producers. So Jacob Zuma's focus was more of a localized production, okay? And Jacob Zuma also spoke about, you know, he also, he also spoke about how the economy had grown at 3.2%. Um, every year from 1994 all the way to 2012, um, despite the global recession in 2008 and 2009, which cleaned many jobs. He also noted that the country's GDP grew to more than 3.5 billion, uh, 3.5 trillion, you see. So jobs were now being created again under his regime, under his presidency. So is this one of the reasons why his popularity, especially as, as his prank back to the politics through the MK party, he still really, you know, his popularity is still picked up without a struggle. I don't know. You guys have to tell us. So he speaks about that there, there were 15 million jobs in the country. 15 million South Africans had jobs more in the country, which was the highest ever in the history um, of South Africa. And over 650,000 jobs were created um, at the year before he left presidency. So within his regime, he made a lot of effort to create jobs. This is from the presidency of Jacob Zuma at the time. But uh, anyway, he they still describes that unemployment still remained high and that youth employment still continued to be a concern, which it was hoped for that President Ramaphosa uh, would come and stamp that problem away. Okay. In terms of the depreciation of the South African rand, um, President, former President Jacob Zuma speak about how um, the depreciation of the RAND during the past year had led to um, inflation, which was not a good news for South African consumers. Um, and that in 2013, the RAND depreciated from 17.6% against the dollar. However, export companies, particularly in the manufacturing sector, um, sh they had to, he encouraged them to take advantage of the weaker RAND and, and grow, you know, lead, leading to, to lead to a stronger global recovery. Now, he speaks about that one of the key drivers of South Africa's economy was mining and the sector that employed over half a million people. So Jacob Zuma spoke about the fact that 
mining was the biggest earner of foreign exchange in the country and it contributed 20 billion rand directly to tax revenue and that mining also took a far larger contribution as a buyer of goods and services and so um, in, in other words, he spoke about how during his re his presidency, um, you know, the government still tried to use mining to sort of like stabilize what felt like a shock, what felt like a shock to the um, currency at the time through his management and through through his you know efforts in 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 that regard. Also, he spoke about the tourism industry. That South Africa received a mere three million foreign visitors, uh, as in from in since 1993 but by 2012 I, I believe this would be this was when he was leaving presidency the, f the amount of um, f visitors to South Africa rose from 3 million to 13 million so South Africa seemed to be more of a really interesting place to visit at the time under Jacob Zuma 13 million visitors every year visited it brought a lot of income to the country you know unlike now where I hear a lot of complaints from people across the world who actually renege when, it, when they think of visiting South Africa because of what they think is a high crime rate and you know really dangerous uh, space in South Africa so does this mean Jacob Zuma maintained uh, a safe place and what would have gone wrong why is it that crime seems to have increased under President Cyril Ramaphosa. These are questions we have to think about, you know, in this regard. On infrastructure, Jacob Zuma spoke about how, you know, the government implemented a national infrastructural plan, which led to an investment of one trillion rand in public infrastructure over five years of his presidency. And the projects include the 700-kilometer fuel pipeline from Durban to Gauteng to transport 4 billion cubic liters of petrol, diesel, and jet fuel every year. He also spoke about the construction of new rail lines in Mpumalanga to ease the pressure on the roads. He spoke about the Gao train. I don't know how functional the Gao train is now in South Africa. You guys have to fill us in the comments. But Jacob Zuma spoke about the Gao train, which carried over 1.2 million passengers in South Africa every month. During his presidency, he also spoke about the launch of the Saldanha Industrial Development Zone and two new factories in the Atlantis. Um, he also spoke about two large new dams which were completed, which is the uh, Dihoop in Limpopo and Spring Grove in KwaZulu Natal, while phase two of the Lesotho Highlands Water Project was to be launched soon. And so finally, in Jacob Zuma's um, you know, address to South Africa, he spoke about how construction was continuing at three new power stations um, you know, to, to relieve what is now called load shedding. So Medupi in Limpopo, Kusile in Mumpumalanga, and in Gula near Ladysmith. And this was employing, according to him, 30,000 people. And I remember uh, former President Abumbeki spoke about this... Uh, electrical um, installation in uh, Medupi, I think, and how the whole thing with BEE introduced, introduced um, not in, in I, I would believe in President Ramaphosa's regime, actually stopped the progress to the construction of um, that installation plant, especially since an Indian an Indian company had been given that contract. But because of the fact that the, the government um, wanted to promote this black empowerment scheme. Uh, the, the Indians couldn't work with the government because of the BEE and they had to leave Medupi uh, or one of those plants anyway. And so that continues, that continued the decay in ESCOM and in the uh, process of power generation. And so these are, these are some of the wins, according to President, former President Jacob Zuma, that he really, you know, impacted on South Africa's economy during his regime. And if we listen to Dr. Franz Cronier here, who speaks about how, uh, you know, from Tabumbeki all the way to President Cyril Ramaphosa, there has seemed to be a downward slide. Many times it makes me wonder if, you know, if this slide was more, more potent 
under the government of President Cyril Ramaphosa. And, uh, and, and especially thinking from the fact that the MK party suddenly became so popular to the point where it is it's president um, dr franz cronier in a little video i'll post he argues that the mk party is a central reason why the eff is unable to cross over 10 percent in the pools at the moment and that its popularity came as a shock to many people and so i really i really struggle to understand if the problem with the issues right now in south africa really began uh, with the presidency of um not like began, but got worse under the presidency of uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, or how do we problematize this downward slide that the ANC um, actually has undergone in its, in its uh, year-long history ever since 1994? Um, I think that's that's uh, that would be where we will stop for this video. But I, I thought that it would, it was really interesting for me to really hear from Jacob Zuma, you know, in how he understood the country, in what he felt was wrong, and it probably this was what propelled him to come back um, into the political space in South Africa after observing a lot of decadence and you know decay that had been going on. Um, in South Africa as compared to his regime, okay? So, um, but I don't know, what do you guys think about this? It, it's been a lot of um, things to share. Share your thoughts in the comments.